WGPR Detroit HD2. You're watching WHPS, Highland Park, Detroit. The views and opinions expressed on the following show are not necessarily the views and opinions of WHPS, its affiliates, management, or sponsors. I pledge to stay drug free. I plan to stay drug free. I pledge to stay drug free. I pledge to be drug free. I pledge to stay drug free. Good afternoon and welcome to Expose Under the Sun, brought to you by the Detroit Native Sun newspaper. I'm Sharon Dumas and I am the producer of the show as well as the co-host of the show. And I'm excited to be here today because as we end the year, we're going to talk about some of the things that happened this year and the good things that are expected next year. And my guest and new co-host is Heather Mann. Hi Heather, how are you? Hi. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Good. Welcome. Welcome. We're excited that you're going to be a part of the team. Yes, I'm excited too. Yes. So to be you, I, in Darwin. Yes. And we're excited to bring a lot of good information to the people in the metropolitan Detroit area. Yeah. That's for sure. So yes. give, us, give us a little background about yourself. Well, love to. Um, my name is Heather Hedheru. You'll see me, Heather Hedheru, Heather Hedheru Man, and I am a personal change coach along with the executive director of Encourage Me, I'm Young. So I have a lot of work, good work in the community, a lot of good work with uh, the, restor rest the restoration of families, moms, kids, and I'm really looking forward to sharing that thing, those things with us today. That's wonderful. And you know, right now, this is a good time for it because all of us are suffering from some level of PTSD and yes. with all this pandemic and the COVID and all the things that are going on, what kind of issues have you found with some of the people and the families that you're working with? Well, I'll, I'll start with um, the families that we work with in Encourage Me, I'm Young. So we primarily work with boys age 8 to 14. And some of the areas that we are working with them is through this idea of isolation. So they spent so much time in isolation and connected to video gaming that that really has become their reality. And so one of the things that we've... Um, kind of uncovered along with others is that there is a, uh, a video game addiction amongst our young people. And so when you try to take the videos, the phones, the technology away, they respond most of the time violently. And so we're trying to give them new tools, work with the families on understanding that um, if you're trying to reduce the amount of screen time or face time they're having, you do that gradually because when you snatch it away, this, just like any, anybody else, if you take something that belongs to them, they're going to lash out. They're going to fight for it. Right. And so I, I think that's one of the areas that we, because it's not something that has been seen before, you know, before, right, this generation that, you know, now they're new, new strategies that we have to adapt as parents and as community members. Right, and then the strategies we used when I was a child, a long, 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 long time ago, does not work with these young people anymore. Right, right, you because know? this is an extension of them. Right. They were born into this technology, and because we weren't born into the technology, this age that they're in, we don't respond the same. And so it doesn't mean the same to us, but we have to be sensitive and even respectful to our children who are actually people. Right. We, we tend to forget that our children and our right. students are actually people. Right. So I think if we kind of just start with that, step back, take a deep breath, and then ask, 
um, negotiate, um, set boundaries. Uh, and I have a 14 year old son, so you guys will probably get to know him really well as we're going through this process mm -hmm. together. Um, and so he's not a big video game guy, but he is a big court TV, um, talk shows, game shows like that is his side gig. Wow. And so, um, you know, even helping him to manage, you know, watching, uh, he likes, uh, our photos and family videos and things like that you think that that's okay but when you're obsessive about it which he becomes obsessive about it we had to set boundaries mm -hmm. so you after homework between seven and eight you can you can watch whatever video family movies videos those kinds of things that you want right but we had to set boundaries which is i think is a big part of what our parenting needs to include for this this generation i agree because I've tried to um, assist with parenting some of my nephews and nieces, and I didn't want to catch a case. Right. So <laughs> I had to step back and just take a look mm -hmm. at what was going on and, and how do I work around it. Today I had an experience where I was talking to a niece, and her son was, um, he came to the phone to give the phone a hug, to give me a hug. And, and then she was calling him. He said, didn't I tell you to wait? Don't, you don't have to act like that. And I'm like, mm -hmm. let me hang up because right. when I see him, he might get it. Right, but, right. You know, we didn't have that type of interaction with our parents. The respect is totally different. It is. Will we regain that respect, do you think? So we have to be open to change. And so because we didn't set those boundaries early in their lives. Drastic change. Yeah, it yeah. is drastic. drastic. It yeah. is drastic. But remember, we were that generation, too that you know had new styles you know had new ideas right had, you know the skirts went from uh below the knee to almost below the hip so right. you know so that's a huge transition for the generation before us right so all of those things we have to remember and we tend to forget that we were kids and but what we remember are the good things we don't remember the things that we had to be disciplined over and things like that yes. so sometimes that gets away from us as we're uh, working with our kids in this generation oh, okay can you give your contact information so if anyone wants to contact you about what you do oh sure absolutely so i'm going to give you two ways to reach me the first one for as a personal change coach you can reach me on my business line at 313-759-7855 and if you want to learn more about encourage me i'm young and the work that we do with boys please reach out to us at uh, area code 313-638-3649 and we're also uh, available online so you can look us up at emmyworld.com that's e-m-i-y world.com Wonderful. Mm -hmm. So as we move forward into the new year, what kind of things are you expecting to do with your organizations? Um, so with your inspired journey, uh, we are we have added uh, Calvin Mann, who, who happens to be my husband, too. Yes, we have added him <laughs> to your inspired journey as a coach. So we're working now with mothers and their sons. Great. We're working with fathers and their sons through your inspired journey. Uh, we're also doing more workshops and are available to do small group workshops. So uh, I work with uh, groups of women, um, uh, about 10 10 or less and we work through some of the challenges that we face as women in a way that's fun i call them girls timeouts okay and so in a way that's fun engaging but actual real tools that we can use to help us on our journey so i think that's really important that's really good i know with my organization we're starting to work on with seniors and i call it season to perfection now that i'm a senior i wanted to know the best way to live my life now mm. and when i did my research i was very surprised at some of the things that i learned that was going on that mm. we don't really hear a lot about like um aids mm. and not specifically men but especially men 60 and over is mm -hmm. very prevalent right. um the violence you know the uh, domestic violence is really big in our in our age group um, STDs. I mean, it's just amazing. Right. But you don't really think about that. So someone yeah. said, well, just think about this, Sharon. When we grew up, we didn't use condoms for um, protection. We used it for pregnancy. Right. So now, now you can't get pregnant. You know, seniors are not using protection anymore. Right, right. And it's really starting to cause a problem. Right. So I sit on a national committee where there's going to be funding to really go deep with seniors, with um, 
people who are 60 and over to really help them see what's going on in our community. And so I'm really excited about that for this year. We yes. had a, a health and wellness festival at Belle Isle. Oh, nice. And the seniors that we worked with were in Highland Park. We had about 110 that we picked up and brought to Belle Isle. And when they came, I played the double Dutch bus. So they came on their walkers <laughs> and it was like, you know, dancing down the aisle. But what I noticed is this. When they came, they were kind of like ashy, you know, like the the skin was dry mm. as soon as they got in the sun and that melanin started picking mm. it was amazing they were upbeat they were just totally different totally different so those are the little small things that i'm seeing that in our community my community that we're going to have to work on and yes. then suicide is up as well yes suicide is up across the board but it across uh, especially in the senior group as well yes, yes. so i'm excited about you know, doing those things as I pivot from going into the schools with mm -hmm. our Full and Fabulous Curvy Girl project and start to work with the seniors. You know, the young people today, honestly, um, you know, they're a little different, they are <laughs> you different. know, especially for my age group. They are and they're different. a little more, you know, a little harder to handle, mm -hmm. even though I believe that they're more damaged than ever before. Mm -hmm. I recall when I first started my organization, I worked with girls who were size 12, 14, now I work with girls that are size 34, wow. 34, 400, 500, 500 plus pounds. Wow. Okay. So the damage is more severe, but how you work with them is totally different. Right. Right. So, yes, yeah, so I have a, my niece and my assistant who's going to be going into the schools. She relates to them. She's in her 30s. She okay. can, yeah. you know, she gets it. I don't get it. <laughs> I did not get it at all. Yes. Not at all. And I understand my, my demographic of women is typically 35. If you're under 35, then you would be married or you're working through uh, long term relationships, uh, you know, kinds of concerns right. as a person of change culture. My, my audience is 35 and over. Oh, OK. Yeah. That's another thing. What do we do about romance at this age? But I mean, you know, my granddaughter mm -hmm. says, hang it up, grandma. You ain't supposed to be talking about that kind of right. stuff. No way, right? <laughs> but we're still here. We're still yes. human. We still have human needs. And yes. it's not the same. You know, of course, we could sit and rub each other's knees and just <laughs> hug each other or whatever. But, um, you know, don't think that we're, we're dead. Right, My right. mom would say there's fire still in the furnace. So. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I'm, you know, but I'm just saying, how right. do we live? I know so many unhappy people my age mm -hmm. until I just refuse to be unhappy. I'm going to find happiness, right. more happiness. You know, you have to make yourself happy. So Absolutely. you just want someone to contribute to your happiness. Yes. So you have any suggestions for us? Absolutely. So my first and foremost that I offer to my, my clients and, and the people who I serve is to find your joy because the opposite of joy is stress. So we know what our stress is. Mm -hmm. We know what it looks like. We know what it feels like. We can tell you all about our stress, but we can't tell you as much about our joy. And so one of the tools and strategies is first to find your joy. Find your joy. And what that means is the things that you like for you. So if you like to swim, then swim. If you like to bake, then bake. But you're not, you have to be able to separate what you do for the loved ones that you have, the people you love in your family. Well, I love seeing them smile. I love cooking for my family. That's amazing, wonderful, but that's not your real joy. I'm over that one. That's a byproduct. <laughs> yeah, that's I'm a byproduct, that right? Yeah. But that's where we go. And when we, it is. when we can't separate what means something to us versus what is meaningful to somebody else through us, we lose ourselves in that space. And so I, that would be my first suggestion. Find your joy. Find those things. And I would suggest for 2022 is to make 22 things that bring you joy. You okay. joy, not somebody else, so that you can look throughout your year of 2022 and find all of those things and fulfill all those things that bring you joy. Absolutely. Great, great, great information. Like I enjoy decorating. Mm. So I had my living room painted um, and then I put up uh, beaded curtains in the window and, nice. and I trimmed everything up and I took glass mirrors and uh, shattered them and put them all around my fireplace. Oh, and, beautiful. You know, and it brought me so much joy. Yes, yes. So for Thanksgiving, it was quiet and peaceful. 
but I was so joyful. Right. I really was joyful. It's like, man, had my fireplace going. It was just like, oh, wow. Oh, fireplaces. You know, this yeah. is like wonderful here. So I felt that joy. So I know exactly what you're talking mm -hmm. about. But we're talking to people, especially now and with uh, Christmas coming up, those are the kinds of things that we need to make sure that we do find something that makes us happy and joyful. Yes, absolutely. And it's it's another way to combat the stress. And there are a lot of people who have been suffering from grief and loss. And yes. that's one of the good strategies that you have. That's your fallback. And, you know, I'm going to give you another secret tool that I use in my sessions. Okay. So this is called the passion pillow. And when you feel stress or you're, you're in that angry stage, you want to make sure that you get yourself a passion pillow. So you want to go spend about mm, about $15 on a pillow. You want it to be fluffy, so get a really firm pillow because one side of the pillow is for your passion, the other side of the pillow is for your pain. So when you're in that mood where you you feel really angry, you can punch that pillow. Draw a little face on it. The, the sad face or the angry face, you know how you can do the lips like that. Right, uh, or the person you're angry about. No, right, no, no, right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. You can use that, and, and trust me, it works. I've helped a lot of women, especially those who have lost their spouse or significant other recently, for whatever reasons they have made those losses or experienced those losses. And that passion pillow works because when you're feeling the loneliness, mm -hmm. then you have the passion that you can squeeze the pillow. Okay. And you can have you can actually have that contact that you can hold and squeeze. And that's a really it's really it's a you might see it as funny right now, but if you try it, especially okay. if you're at that stage that you try it, the the happy side is your passion, that's the one you want to squeeze. The other side is your pain. So you want to punch it. If you want to punch somebody, punch that pillow. Make sure you have it on a soft, a soft surface, right? Right. You pull it up against your bed on your pillows. You want to use it that way so you don't injure yourself in the process. But it's such a great way to release that stress and to uh, decompress, which is another area. And I've, I'm looking forward to having a conversation in our future shows about the difference between depression and decompression. It's really important to know the difference. And I think a lot of people kind of get stuck because we label so many things and we, we, there's no gray areas. Right. So this allows you to experience that gray area of reflection versus depression as well. So I'm looking forward to having those wow. conversations. That mm -hmm. sounds great. Now, with our girls in, uh, in the Curvy Girl Project, we do the Zoom sessions on Wednesdays. Mm -hmm. And we have a therapist for them now because the anxiety was so high, especially in the height of the pandemic. Yes. And now as we are moving forward, it's the same thing. And to hear a young person say they're depressed, I've never heard it so much. It's mm -hmm. just... That's all they say. Right. It's I'm depressed or I'm dead. I'm depressed or I'm dead. Mm -hmm. And I tell them not to say I'm dead because when you put something in the universe, you, you, you're saying it over and over and right. you shouldn't say that. Right, right. But that's their new slang or whatever. Yeah. Um, but what can you, what tip can you give us for our young people when they're depressed? So one of these, the tools that they have that they don't always use is uh, actually having a conversation talk to your parents. These are people who have experience and who love you. So there may be some of the subject matter that you may be experiencing may be, you know, a little difficult for your parents to handle, but you need to speak to a reliable, trustworthy adult. So I would suggest if that's your parent for you to start off, start with them. If you have an aunt or an uncle that you can have, that you have that rapport with, then move to them. You need to find a trusted adult because sometimes our, our our peers our friends don't give us the best advice right. uh, because they haven't had enough experience not because they don't love you and care about you and our friends will tell you that everything you do is good everything you do is right and that may not be true right so you want to make sure you go to somebody who you can trust who can give you uh, uh, wise counsel wise counsel <laughs> so that sometimes that comes with age and maturity too right and it comes with experience so you want to make sure that you have those conversations with someone you can trust right mm -hmm. and they trust us and uh their parents they're the problem mm -hmm. <laughs> you know Often. they think that they are they are the problem when we know that they're not um but just to hear them say and they're serious yes you know they can't handle as much as we've had to handle it seems to me mm -hmm. and the least the smallest little thing 
you know, I'm bored, I'm depressed, I'm bored, I'm depressed. Like, mm -hmm. no, get up and do something. Right. You right. know, anything, you know, anything but the games. I don't really like the, the games because it occupies their time a lot. And then they don't ever want to get off of it. Like when you're talking about with the young men getting violent. Right. It's the same thing. Also, I read an article about the, um, the with the music today. Mm. That the, what is it, the um, frequency has been turned up on the music that's causing our young people to be violent. Yes. Do you know anything about that? Oh, absolutely. So one of the um, the challenges that we face sometimes is the uh, encoding, subliminal messaging. There are a lot of people who have a vested interest in chaos, division. They profit from that. Right. They profit from the division of family because now you need more services. You mm -hmm. need more drugs. You need more more band-aids not solutions because they're not offering solutions they're offering temporary band-aids not solutions so you have to be mindful so if it's not a solution you may want to look at that uh, take a second look at that whatever mm -hmm. is being suggested to you um so i think that's where kind of where we get stuck though we get stuck because it it, it gives us a temporary sense of relief and but it never gets to the deeper root of the issues and i think that's another step that we have to make we have to move beyond the band-aids into the deeper solutions and i'm, I'm hoping that as we go through um uh, the rest of this year in 2022 that we can really talk about some solutions there are solutions there is wise counsel for you and we're going to have them as guests to come and visit right. us as we're we're going through this process Right, and we do need solutions. Um, my parent organization, nonprofit, is Urban Solutions mm. Training and Development because 40 years ago, I thought, well, what are the solutions to what's going on? And back then, it was nothing like what's happening right now. Oh, absolutely. Right. It's a different time. It's right. a different time. So it calls for different uh, measures, right? Different times calls for new measures. New measures. Mm -hmm. So we're in four schools, Detroit Public Schools. And the young people today are doing so many different things in school. There's like no respect, no boundaries or anything. Mm -hmm. And some of the parents... They come up to the school, but still they can't, they have very little control of our young people. Mm -hmm. Do you have any tips for a parent that might be out there that can help them have better control until they get to your program? Okay. All right. <laughs> um, so some of the things that I, I would suggest is to, um, but you have to do this when you're not angry and your child is not angry. Okay. So when you're on some neutral, neutral ground, so maybe you make dinner together. Maybe you're going out to dinner together. Take your notebook, create a contract. Start with asking questions so that you can have a conversation. You actually need to know what their boundaries are. They need to be able to negotiate what those boundaries are. So the first big thing is to find a, uh, a middle ground so that you're not angry and they're not angry. And you come together and have this conversation. And I, and I know for some of us that may be old school negotiating with your kids about your rules and your house is unacceptable, right? I was just thinking that, yeah. But you have that. to remember you're sharing that house. Right. And if you want peace. And, and if you want peace and if you right. want to really make it work, you have to give some. As a parent, you have to give more than just the provision part of it. This is the in, inner vision that you want to make sure that you have with your, your child. You want to build a relationship, not a friendship. Be clear that that is not what I'm saying. You are not to be your child's friend, but you are to have a healthy relationship with your child. Okay. I think that's really important. And I think sometimes we cross the boundaries where we think we have to be friendly or friends with our children. And they're not to be your friends. They're right. not your friends. Got you. And then I think also when I ask our girls in the program, how many times do they hear that someone loves them? Mm -hmm. For the most part, hardly ever. Mm -hmm. You know, some of them, the parents maybe once or twice a week or something like that. So I truly believe that it's so important that we let them know that we love them. Mm -hmm. So when we go into the schools, that's the first thing I say. This, you know, we love you enough to be here, mm -hmm. to want to make a difference in your life, to help your parents get you through this time. Mm -hmm. And so if there's one thing I could tell people out there is that you got to we got to talk about love a little bit more. 
I mean, when I, I said I love you to a guy and he was like, I said, I didn't say I was in love with you. <laughs> I love you as a human being. Right. You know, we don't really hear it. And then the vibrations when you say it, you know, I feel a vibration when I say it. Yes. Like, man, you know, and when I hear it, it's the same thing. Yes. So with our young people, they're allowed to open our programs up with prayer. Wow. And the parents agreed and, and all of that. That's a part of our program. And then we can say that we love each other. And it doesn't mean that I'm gay, you're gay, or any of that. Mm -hmm. It just means that as a human being, as a person, I love you. That's it. <laughs> you know, and That's so. so incredible. Incredible and so very important. So we see so much danger, people being killed and murdered and everything on television. So the compassion is no longer there the way it was before. That's true. But just to hear, you know. Heather, I love you, girl. I, I really know, do. I, I feel that. I feel that while you're sitting mm -hmm. here. So I'm mm -hmm. just saying that if we could say that a little bit more, call some people up you haven't talked to in a while and say, I love you. I mean, even on Facebook now, when there's someone that I know I'm responding, I love you, sis. Mm -hmm. I love you, my brother, because we're not hearing that anymore. Mm -hmm. And you'll never know. I recall having a voicemail back in the day. And I would have so many hangups on my voicemail. So Christmas time, I change my message. It's always positive, and I always say I love you. Well, when I answered the phone, the lady said, "Oh, you startled me. I, I call your number all the time." <laughs> so she's the one who had been hanging up. She said, "I call you because when I was going to commit suicide, and I was trying to call my mom to tell her that this is what I was going to do, I got your number." Mm. And that message made a difference to me. It resonated with me mm -hmm. where I felt hope. And at the end of it, ma'am, you said, I love you. That was all she needed to hear. Wow. Yes. So I'm just saying, come on, it's Christmas time, especially. Let's do a little bit better than what we've been doing. And let's just, you know, love on each other. That don't mean let's you have to hug. It's COVID. We know all that. But it's just so important that we love on each other. So give your contact information again, please. Sure. You can reach me. Uh, you can start off at my website so you can get a little more insight. That would be yourinspiredjourney.com. You'll find lots of information about my books, about workshops, about ways to connect, and great information if you're into um, spiritual and metaphysical information. There's great tools there, too. Um, also, you can reach us at emmyworld.com. That's E-M-I-Y world.com. Thank you. And my information is Full and Fabulous, The Curvy Girl Project. Our website is www.fullandfabulous.org. We celebrate 40 years next year. I'm so excited. I cannot hardly believe it's 40 years, but it's been 40 years. And we're going to have a grand time all throughout the year next year. So we have some surprises. And I just want to welcome you as a co-host. We're looking forward to um, all the topics that you have, the new topics that you have to bring to the table. So between you and Darwin through the winter, because of my accident, I won't come during the winter, but you and Darwin, I'm sure, are going to have this handled, and oh, people yes. are going to learn quite a bit about just improving our lives and yes. making a difference in the lives of others, because that's really what it's all about, yes. is making a difference in the lives of other people. Yes, so, I agree. Yeah, I agree. I'm excited. So as we close, I would like for everyone to understand that it's so important that we love on each other. So I just want to say to you, I love you. I love you with all my heart. I want us all to make it through what we're going through right now. This is all new for all of us. So let's just stick it, to, stick out this thing together and love on each other a little bit more. I'm Sharon Dumas. I was your host today. We'll see you next week.